pretty is the light. So, um, let's talk about plants a little bit. <laughs> I don't know what that was. I never actually had plants of my own to take care of until a few months ago when I decided to purchase a couple of plants that I absolutely love. One is a Syngonia that I conveniently placed here to show you. Um, there we go. It's called Byron because it reminds me of Byron Bay. I lived there for two months in 2018 and the house that I lived in had so many of these little plants. And then I also got a elephant ear plant, also called a Lucasia poly. This has suffered quite a lot during winter. It's a tropical plant, so it obviously needs a very humid and warm environment, but it was pretty cold here. So it lost most of its leaves. I don't remember how many it had, but it's probably more than 10. And <laughs> now we only have two left. I'm honestly surprised they survived because it lost its last leaf like last week, maybe 10 days ago. And so I was like, okay, well, it's, it's, it's gonna die. It's gonna die. I read that they usually go into dormancy when the weather is too cold. So I thought that's what was happening. But I honestly just noticed before starting to film this clip that it's growing a new leaf. Isn't it beautiful? It looks like... Anyway, what I actually wanted to do today was part some pothos cuttings that I took five weeks ago. Like the roots have grown so much because the weather has uh, warmed up quite a bit here in Rome past week and that definitely helped this beautiful babies grow some very healthy root systems. Let me just show you. Sorry for my chipped nail polish. So I'm going to move to the garden now and put all of these together into soil. I know that it's quite hard for plants that have been in water to adjust to soil. So I guess I'll have to praise the plant lords <laughs> to help me do this. I don't know. Um, I'll keep my fingers crossed. But I know that it's my very first propagation experimentation. Propagation experiment? Even the fact that I've grown such healthy root systems is a step forward for me, so I'll take anything. <laughs> Okay, let's move to the garden. I also remember 
remembered I have this dying basil plant and well it's not dying I just like used all of the leaves to make pesto I'm gonna transfer it to the bigger pot hoping that it'll grow some new leaves so I have the basil plant and the purpose. I'm not sure I did the best job. <laughs> the cuttings are so small that they're pretty hard to manage, but we'll see. I haven't woken up this early in forever. Now is not the time for attention. I was out and about. I went to my therapist office for the first time since the lockdown started, which is very much needed. We unpacked some pretty heavy stuff, so <laughs> kind of cried a little bit. Every therapy session that I do feels like a big, big sigh of relief. Um, so that was really good. I went with public transport because I don't have a car. <laughs> And there was like this mini market near the bus stop so I got some things I got some sweet potatoes, chickpea flour, glutinous rice flour I was actually about to buy it online because I really want to make mochi uh, which is a, like a Japanese treat that is super delicious but yeah I found it by chance then I got a lot of coconut milk some paprika, tahini the guy at the shop gifted me some walnuts, which was really nice of him. So then I took the bus home and stopped by the uh, health food shop that I have nearby. Some soft silk and tofu, blueberry soy yogurt, this is so good, and some soy milk. Lots of soy products. <laughs> They're my fave. And this is it. It's almost 12, so I think I'm going to be making some lunch. So it's 3 p.m. So three hours have passed and I still haven't eaten lunch. I was feeling super tired before. I truly didn't have the energy to cook. I thought it was a combination of me pouring every last bit of energy into my therapy session and the fact that I woke up at 6.30, which is something I never really do. Like I'm definitely not used to that. I ended up taking a two plus hours nap. Yeah, I definitely wasn't planning on doing that, but, but I guess I needed that because on top of those two reasons, I actually just realized that I got my period. Yay! <laughs> I'm going to make some food now. 
I'm snacking on some of the blueberry yogurt that I bought before and strawberries because I am literally starving and I can't wait before everything else is ready. The everything else is some cabbage and tofu and avocado. And I think I'm also probably going to make some Japanese rice. Here's the finished product. It's nothing fancy, but it's delicious. We have some shredded sauteed cabbage, a miso lemon tahini sauce, pan fried tofu with the miso, uh, maple, and sesame oil glaze, avocado, some baked cauliflower from yesterday, Japanese rice, my favorite, and plenty of sesame seeds. Yummy! I'm obviously speaking metaphorically. Right. Me too. Our city is wonderful. It's a great place to walk around. I thought I would give you a little bit of an introduction and talk about who I am and what I do. I am Moki. I'm 23 years old, soon to be 24, and I'm from Rome, Italy. I'm going to be pretty honest here and uh, admit that I feel like I've wasted most of my life trying to find my calling, whatever that means. But I think I've done it in the wrongest possible way. Because in doing so, I know it sounds cheesy, but I totally forgot to live in the moment and enjoy the present. I was always thinking about my future and what I could do, but I could never actually do what I wanted to do. I totally neglected both my mental and physical health, and therefore I had no energies whatsoever, both, again, mental and physical energies to do anything that I wanted to do. I had goals that I wanted to achieve and I had lots of dreams that I wanted to pursue but I just couldn't do it. Yeah, I just didn't have the energy to take charge of my life. I wanted to, I really wanted to, but I just couldn't do it. I was basically frozen, paralyzed by anxiety and fears about the future and I didn't know how to get out of it. I felt like I was inside this bubble, inside this world of mine, and I just couldn't get out of it. And it was like that for a really long time, for what felt like an eternity. This year, I somehow managed to... What? You try again? Shut up. <laughs> this year, somehow, I gathered enough courage to face my fears, and with a newfound lightness, I decided to finally change things around for the better for once and for all. This change started mostly by deciding to start therapy a few months ago. And thanks to this journey, for the first time in my life, I'm actually acknowledging and facing and challenging some really negative beliefs and patterns that are recurrent in my behaviors that are obviously not good for myself and that are feeding this dissatisfaction that I have for my life and this inability to get things done. Right before the big Rona started to shake up the world, I actually decided I would take things seriously, pursuing my photography goals. Um, I'm laughing because that was really bad timing on my behalf. I decided to quit the full-time job that I had for almost a year. It took February to just like give myself some time to get back into a normal life and take care of myself and then March came by and the lockdown started I'm from Italy which was one of the first countries to send the whole country into national lockdown I have to say that even though this whole thing started right as I was trying to build my photography business I was sort of in a productivity kick at the time and I was really positive and so for the first month, month and a half I kept myself productive and kept myself sane by doing a lot of things and then for some reason I went into full existential crisis mode all over again and started feeling like I was feeling right before I started therapy being paralyzed again I fucked up my sleeping schedule, I was going to bed at like 2, 3 a.m. I was eating like shit, binge watching Netflix 24 seven, and that was not good. I knew that I could do better than that. My therapist always loves giving me these comparisons to think about to put things into perspective. She once told me that when I'm feeling paralyzed, when I'm feeling stuck, it's as if I was stuck down into a ditch and I was trying to get out. If I 
don't move, if I don't try to do anything at all, nothing will happen and I will eventually die there. But if I do try to climb up the walls and try to get out, I do have the risk of falling and hurting myself, but I also have the opportunity to eventually get out of there and survive. Having people at the top helping you out definitely makes the process much easier as long as you do try to reach out for help. I know that might sound very cheesy but but when you're in those dark moods and you don't have anyone on your side trying to get you out of that funk it helps to think about these metaphors to remind you that you can get over this, like things will get better. And the only reason why I'm sharing this is because I know there's plenty of people out there who are probably in the same situation, feeling really bad, stuck, depressed, and feeling like it's the end of the world and you know, things will never get better, but they will eventually as long as you do try to ask for help. Because, you know, there's no point in wallowing yourself in your own pain and sorrows. I've been there. I still go through a lot of those dark moods, but you just have to remind yourself that you're strong enough to get up again once you've fallen. I assure you, you're strong enough. Anyway, I kind of went on tangent there. <laughs> All this to say that I somehow was able to get back up after that week of feeling terrible for myself. And I'm now trying to let new inspiration come to me, which is why I decided to film this YouTube video, even though it's also new to me. And I have so many doubts. Like every time I film something, I'm like, oh my God, why am I doing this? There's no point in doing this. I don't know, if I'm fit for YouTube. What will people think of me? People will be judging every single little thing that I do. Is it really worth all this effort? Or I go into this full existential crisis every time I do anything remotely creative and that's terrible for myself so I'm just trying to like push past these doubts and get this content out there because I know that at least some people will enjoy it even if it's just 10 people I don't know it's a challenge for myself and talking about challenges I'm also trying to challenge myself in other ways for example I'm doing a 30 day yoga challenge Yoga is something that I've been interested in for quite a long time now but I've never actually been diligent and consistent enough to commit myself to a daily yoga practice because I suck with consistency honestly it's like my one thing that I just can't do since I am trying to take charge of my life and finally building a life for myself that I enjoy. This is something that I really need to work on and I'm trying to work on. Hopefully this yoga challenge will be a start. I'm a day eight today. I have like three weeks left and I'm super excited to see how I will be at the end of this challenge, you know, mentally and physically. On top of yoga and YouTube, I'm also doing things that I haven't done in years, like painting. I've only painted like a couple times the past week, but it was really therapeutic. I didn't really have anything in mind when I started painting. I just let myself be inspired by the colors that I was choosing and the shapes that I was making and I ended up with two very abstract looking paintings. This is the first one. The second one is the one that I made with watercolors. I definitely like this more than the other one because I like the effect of watercolors. This actually inspired me to paint again. So I think I'm going to do that before the sun goes down in like half an hour. <laughs> Grab your cutting board with your strawberries. Okay. He's so and precious. Then we kind of have to work oh my quick. God. I just want you to core okay. core your strawberries. If they're big, cut them in oh. half. And just sort of <laughs> stick your knife in the top where. The oh, baby. 
Now I'm matchy matchy with my matcha. Uh, okay, I'll see myself out after this one. I've always wanted to buy something like this to get a little bit creative with my photography as well as making my room pretty and I just decided to treat myself. I feel like a little kid, but like in the best way possible. Feel the chest open, the lungs expand with breath. One more inhale here. Let's release the left foot down. Beautiful. Go ahead and curl the back toes under. That was not too bad. Merido. What's a bab? Set you up in Lady Tulus, this was your final jam at the chest on me. Harry was over a piacere. Ehi hey Marti, facciamo che ti risponda audio per audio che sennò poi va a finire sempre che non mi ricordo mai che cosa ti devo dire. One teaspoon kosher salt. Pinch of salt. One teaspoon kosher salt. How much? Oh, one teaspoon. So it's really important not to use an iodized salt. I'm kind of comparing it to like a, 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 a movie <laughs> version of like a, a failing marriage, you know? It's like, I just got long hours, babe. I don't have time to, to go dancing. Sound big sauerkraut. But now <laughs> I've got nothing but time. And we've never been closer. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I stir it and... Okay. Honestly, I love Claire, but I would die for Brad from the Pony Potato Task Kitchen. Just 
I honestly don't think I've ever broken such a sweat before. I mean, I've definitely broke a sweat, but not this kind of sweat. Enjoy this beautiful coat of my skin, unfiltered, unedited, with all of its flaws, pimples, spots, scratches. It's for all of you out there who are also struggling with skin issues at the ripe age of 23 years old. I think since the lockdown started, I put makeup on around maybe four to five times, which is so sad. I mean, I really like putting makeup on makes me feel somewhat more productive. I feel like I've had the same makeup routine forever, like ever since I started putting makeup on. So I just want to experiment a little bit today, maybe do a different colored eyeshadow. I think I'm gonna use this eyeshadow palette from Smashbox. I'm also using this rust color from this other NYX palette. I don't know how I feel about this. <laughs> you know what it kind of reminds me of? Hayley Williams hair style in Misery Business. Like, it's exactly the same colors. Also, look at the sweat on my nose. It's like 26 degrees and I'm dying. Two colors. Oh my god. Wait, she has she has the same makeup. It's exactly the same makeup. It's too hot. Oh my goodness, she was much better. Trying to give some life to my non-existent Asian eyelashes. definitely experiment more with my makeup <laughs> and not always stick to the same boring ass colors. Those were some intense close-ups, huh? Okay, now that I'm slightly more appealing to the eyes, or so I would like to believe, <laughs> I just wanted to briefly mention how today, if I find May Monday, May 18th to be exact, some restrictions are being eased and or lifted today in Italy, so that's really cool. Uh, obviously the lockdown hasn't ended, but uh, we can start to socialize again and I already have like a few catch-ups with friends lined up for the week, which is so exciting and honestly like I'm so grateful. <sighs> um, it doesn't even feel real to be honest. After three months of being cooped up in my house, I realized in general just socializing and meeting up with people and having fun and playing just for the sake of playing is something that I've always taken for granted and I've never really given it the importance that it actually has. I was always like, I'll do it tomorrow, I'll do it next week, I'll do it next month, I don't have to do it, I have to focus on Know my goals and working and pursuing my goals and then ended up not doing that because I felt like shit and that's because I never really care too much for playing just letting my inner child free interesting topic that I actually was introduced to by my therapist if she didn't remind me that playing and having fun is something important that we have to do that we have to make time for in our lives I honestly don't think I would have ever actually done it and that's why I feel like therapy is so important it makes you realize things that may not be obvious to you so yeah, to sum things up in order to take care of myself so my mental and physical health I also need to make time for socializing and playing definitely look forward to meeting up with my friends again to enjoy life otherwise what is the point? this is my brother's bedroom mom <laughs> he commissioned this verse a couple days ago because he wanted to jazz up his white wall he wrote his girlfriend's name up here and wanted a rose a yellow rose to be precise and so um, I did it. I, of course, haven't finished it yet. I wasn't even sure I wanted to say yes, to be honest. It's just that I haven't painted in such a long time in the first place, let alone painting on a wall. It's not, you know, that big of a deal. It's not that big. It's like, this is my hand. But I'm just not used to it. 
It's obviously not that special. Um, I could have done a much better job, but it's not too shabby for a first mural of sorts. So yeah, let me finish this up and um, I'll show you the final result. Vai, ora. Adesso. Sofia, forte, forte. Mandaci. Che sta fa? Ah, sorella. Cheers.